Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today, I'm going to be drawing male torsos using pastel pencils. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I'm going to be using blue tinted pastel paper because we are going to be channeling those Renaissance drawings by Durer, where he used a tinted paper and added blue and white highlights. These are the pastel pencils that I'm using today, and they're similar to charcoal pencils, but they're not quite as hard as your typical charcoal pencil. They're a little bit more brittle, but of course you can see there's this huge range of colors that's really exciting. Okay, let's just get started with the vine charcoal. Just to block out the form, I'm gonna start with Jack Black. He's here from, I never saw this movie, Gulliver Tra Gulliver's Travels. And right now, the way I'm starting the image is really no different than the way I would start out a traditional gesture drawing. Very light and loose, locking in rib cage, pelvis and the head, the larger masses, and definitely the center line. This one's pretty easy, very straightforward in terms of the center line. And I'm looking at the relationship between the width of the rib cage and the width of the hips. In this case, the hips are not quite as wide. So I'm gonna tweak that quite a bit and maybe start to block in some of the muscles. Like here we have the pectoralis major, definitely get in the belly button just as a landmark. Here are the external oblique, better known as love handles. The head's in an awkward place. Like you don't really see the chin because he's looking downwards, but we do have major trapeziuses here. Little bit of deltoid coming down. Actually, the deltoids are pretty clear cut in this image. We're gonna do extremities of the figure today because we're gonna do Jack Black, who is a larger figure. We're also gonna do a scary looking photo of Christian Bale when he lost a ton of weight for this movie called The Machinist. Okay, now if you guys want more information about the specific muscles, I recommend you guys that you take a look at this stream where I go over the anatomy of the front torso muscles. And this was actually a stream that Jordan and I did a few days ago where both of us drew front male torsos. And I'm gonna do something somewhat similar today, but the material is gonna be quite different. And by the way, you guys, if you want links to the art supplies that I'm using today. Those are in the YouTube video description below. And if you guys wanna download higher resolution images of the reference photos, that link is also in the YouTube video description. And I wanna remind you guys, please draw along with me. You can use any media you want. And what we do after the stream is we hang out in the Art Prof Discord, where you guys can post all the stuff you make and it's really cool to see what everybody does. Okay, now I'm gonna to start to press a little bit harder. Actually, I gotta squint. I don't think I made it wide enough. Yeah. You know something, this point in the drawing, people might think there's no point in squinting, but actually you gotta catch those proportional issues early. If I keep drawing and drawing, I'm gonna miss that. And I can already see he's probably too long. So I'm gonna bring out the width of the top part of the rib cage. 
And I'm going to make the external oblique not so tall. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, that was a really simple change, but it's fundamental. It's very, very important. And then if I move the belly button up, yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, and then here, I'm going to hint at rectus abdominis, which is the abdominal muscles, get my center line back in there, and let's start to articulate better what's happening with the pectoralis major. I'm not going to work on the arms that much, but I do want to show the deltoid muscle, which is up here. Can't see his clavicles that much. They are there, but they're not Wolverine <laughs> clavicles. I mean, who has Wolverine clavicles? But I just thought it'd be really good for you guys to see a drawing in depth where the muscles and the bones are not easy to find. I mean, we're going to draw that piece of Christian Bam a little bit. And in that drawing, it's really easy to see. Here, you can't really see it. Okay, now look at this. Everybody see how the pectoralis major, you guys see this flap of skin? And then here, so the pectoralis major, it almost like divides into two portions. And I would put the stipples. <laughs> Rhymes with stipple, because I don't want to get demonetized <laughs> by YouTube. And that is so awkward. Oh, geez. How do I do that? Who's drawing along? Tell me, you guys. Are you drawing with me? Or maybe you're just drawing, but you're not drawing what I'm drawing, which is fine. I mean, some people like to just hang out with us and draw, which is totally cool. Okay. It's a pretty good basic outline. I think I do want to get this side a little bit more solid. I mean, it's hard to draw larger figures because the way that the form is distributed, it's not predictable the way that it is on Wolverine. <laughs> on Wolverine, everything's just laid out for you. It's not difficult to do. <laughs> well, it's not that it's not difficult. It's just easier, easier on the eyes. <laughs> All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Nevena says, I think they might be more pigmented than regular charcoal sticks. I know mine are, probably. I don't know the chemical makeup. I just know that when I draw with these pastel pencils, they're softer. They don't feel as harsh as even the soft charcoal pencils. Like they don't feel as dense in terms of materials. Tom G says, drawing along, starting to look like the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> well, he is rising up out of the ocean. I mean, that's not that inaccurate, in my opinion. <laughs> and Dude is asking, how does squinting help you catch proportional issues? It makes it so that I don't pay attention to little things. So what you guys will see me do when I squint, not only do I squint, but I also tilt my body back a little bit. And when I squint, I have to look at the most simplified version, especially when you get deeper into the drawing and there's more details. You tend to get very seduced by that. You don't look at the big shapes, like you don't look at the overall form. And so squinting is very, very helpful. Yeah, like Nevena, this is a great point you bring up. You simplify what you see to lights and shadows. That's why you squint. Yeah. <laughs> Rigglesworth says, I watched Days of Future Past last night and kept thinking of Professor Lou. <laughs> oh, I like that movie. There's just there's just so many hot white men. <laughs> there's so many scenes where there's two of them and you just don't know where to look. <laughs> Mari says, hi, I'm 12. I started realism at age eight, and now I'm going to art school in a few months. Well, that is really cool, Mari. I'm so glad that you can join us. Mari says, I come here on every live. Very cool. And by the way, tell me, who here, is this your first live stream 
here at Art Prof. I love it when there's new people. And who here is a lurker? You've been here, you watch, you're into it, but you've never said hello. Just say hello. I love it when people say hello in the chat. OK, let's take a look at the lighting situation. Now, the lighting's coming from above. There's not a lot of highlights. So I think what I'm going to do is start with some of the darker areas. And I'm not going to use black. Let, let me try out. Sometimes I'll just put a couple. It's a little bit red. Maybe I want something a little bit more cool. Yeah, that's a little bit better. OK, so let's try that. I might actually blend more colors later on. But for now, let's just start with something more simple. Today, I wanted to get a lot more specific about the cross hatching technique because I mentioned some of it in the stream that I did with Jordan, but I didn't get super specific about how it actually works. So I'm going to start doing that today. And actually, if you guys missed it, these are the two drawings that I did in the stream with Jordan. And I actually did go back. And I worked on this drawing a little bit more after the stream. And actually, I really wish I had it. I feel like it got a little mushy. And I feel like I lost the bite of the initial marks. Lately, that's been happening all the time. I did that sculpt along stream recently. And I went back. Sometimes I just watched the stream little pieces here and there. And the sculpture looked way better in the middle of the stream than it did at the end. That's OK. So I did go back and I worked on this a little bit. And then this is the one that I did in the first part of the stream. This was a 50 cent. I did a tiny bit of work on it after the stream, but not very much. But I think what I really just want to show you guys is the full range. So even though I don't like the outcome of this piece. At the very least, it shows you how much further you can get if you do want the rendering to be a little bit tighter, a little bit more smooth. And then if you don't want that, you can always stop yourself sooner. So I think it's important to show that entire process regardless of how I feel about it. OK, so what you guys can see I'm doing here is I'm doing like these groups of lines. OK, and I do think it's helpful when you do the lines, give them a slight curve, OK? So for example, if I go here and you make lines that are really, really straight, these are not great for drawing the human figure because the human figure is very soft and organic. So you don't need to do like this. Like I think that's too much. But I think just a slight curve like that is pretty good. Now, another thing you don't want to do with cross hatching is you don't want to build it up too soon. So for example, a lot of people, they start like this. They make the lines really, really dense. And then that's really hard to transition out of because then you do this. And then all of a sudden, this is like really, really dark and dense. So I prefer lines that are pretty far apart. And then when I go in and I layer more marks on top, Eventually, you do get to the point where it gets very dense. But what I like about this is that it's a lot more incremental. Like you build the marks slowly. Whereas if I start like this and I make the marks really dense, see that? It's like it got done so fast. And for a lot of these areas, I don't want that. I want it to be a lot more incremental. So a slight tilt like this. And also, I don't do this. Does everybody see this? Sometimes people do like a grid. I also don't like the grid very much because it just feels very mechanical. And if you do something like this, if you do marks that are a little bit curved, and then when you cross them, you don't cross them like a grid. It's more like that. It's more like diamonds that are a little bit curved. I find this to be an easier pattern. Now, this is all a matter of personal taste. Not everybody's going to want to crosshatch the way I do, but I find this easier to control the marks and where they are going. OK, and the other key thing about crosshatching in the beginning, it's not just the marks, but you have to jump around. So it's like a group here, a group there, a group here. 
and I'm picking out the darkest areas to emphasize. So here's the abdominal muscles. You can see a little bit of serratus muscle here, a little tiny bit. It's not that obvious, but it's definitely there. And I'm jumping around like this. So the mistake that I see, in my opinion, that I see a lot of people doing with cross hatching is they start in one place and then they like move out, but you don't want to do that. You want to leap around a little bit more and you want to follow the form. Does everybody see this is the pectoralis and there's this like piece of form that comes out like this. Let's just get the side of that coming in. Okay, and then I can articulate more the contour over here. And same thing here, this is an overlap. This is the pectoralis major coming in front of this flap of skin. And then this is really, really light, but there's a tiny bit of shadow up here. This begins to hint at the clavicles, not that obvious. And then I'm trying to block in because there's a lot of shadow in the center area. Tell me in the chat, who's gonna try the cross hatching with me? You don't have to, I mean, you guys can draw however you want. I happen to love cross hatching. It's something I discovered in graduate school because in graduate school, we just had like hours and hours of model time. And this is one of those techniques that's slow. So it's difficult to do if you don't have a lot of time with the model, but if you do, it's awesome. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the face. I mean, the face is very much in shadow, but I do think it's a mistake not to do anything because the, the face is very much planted in and I need to show that pressure of the chin coming outwards. And by the way, in case you guys are wondering, I will stop every now and then and scroll up and look at the chat. So if I'm not answering your question right away, it's not because I'm not going to, it's because I can't talk and draw and read comments <laughs> at the same time. I can draw and talk at the same time, that's fine. Okay, so even now, do you guys see that tilt of the pectoralis major? It's time to squint. Did I make him too wide? I might have, but you know what? I think I'd rather him too wide than too long because here's the thing. I'm not trying to do an accurate representation here. I just want to draw form. That's all I care about. I just want to show form. And so the accuracy of that form to me is less important. I think what I really want you guys to see is the cross hatching technique and how to get that to work out. Okay, now a little bit down the center to show that center line so we don't lose it like that. And then this form here, this is the rectus abdominis, also has quite a bit of shadow like that. Okay, so does everybody see? That's the first pass, okay? Not even close. Actually, I take it back. I need to articulate the nose. The nose looks terrible. So let's, and maybe just a little bit of the mouth, just to show that most of the face is in shadow because that, that is important to this piece to show that. Like that. Okay, that's the very, very first pass that's going on. Let me show you guys some examples of cross hatching that will help you understand a little bit better what I'm after. So for example, here are some cross hatch drawings by Durr. Now these are in pen, but I actually find these easier to look at because the lines are really visible. Now a lot of people would look at the slide and they would look at the hands and go, oh my God, there's so many lines, the hands are so detailed. Yeah, true. But the part of the drawing I want you guys to look at is the bottom. Does everybody see on the right-hand side, I have a detail shot. That's what we're doing right now. The section with very loose outlines, cross hatch marks, groups of them, 
that are distributed throughout the form, that's what you guys want to look at. Okay. Cause a lot of people, they look at these like super, super detailed cross hatch image and they go, Oh my God, I don't know where to begin. Of course you don't because it's too <clears throat> filled in and rendered. So here's another one. This is by Michelangelo. And a lot of people think that he just toned his drawings. He didn't. A lot of these are cross hatch drawings that are built up so much that you can't see the cross hatch marks, but the drawing on the left hand side, very clear cut the cross hatch marks. The one on the right is a little bit more rendered, but you guys can see it's all cross hatching. So really the key to understanding cross hatching, you guys, it's not looking at the fancy drawings. It's looking at the image on the right where Durer has barely started the image. And then you'll see eventually he does build up to that. But that's the issues people tend to look at really finished stuff and it's an issue. Okay, I'm gonna actually zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better because I'm gonna start to do more detailed stuff. And let me just move my board a little bit more to the side so that way you guys can see better. Nika Sensei says, love cross hatching. First learned about it from the fruit baskets manga. I was obsessed with the cross hatching used in the eyes. Manga is a great place for you guys to look at cross hatching because there's a lot in manga. If you guys look at Junji Ito, oh my gosh, she is amazing cross hatch marks that are really, really fun. San K says, did Michelangelo do any shading or is it just all cross hatching? I don't know. I mean, I have not looked at every single <laughs> Michelangelo drawing that's out there, but if you guys look really close, you'll start to pick out some drawings where you see very, very light marks because this drawing that I did, if, if you guys don't know, this is Joaquin Phoenix being creepy <laughs> in that Joker movie, but in some of these areas, if you're not looking carefully, some people might mistake this for tone. I mean, I didn't go as fine as Durer and Michelangelo, but you can get it to really look like tone. It's really remarkable. Melissa says, I start with hatching, but I always find I abandoned it part of the way. I feel like it looks messy. Messy's not bad. But also, Melissa, if you want something that looks less messy, sometimes it's a matter of more. Maybe you stop too soon and maybe you could keep going because this image that I did here from that stream with Jordan, I totally could work on this more. I could get it really crazy refined. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should take some time just so you guys can see the level of refinement. Like it's not my personal taste to draw like that. I happen to like drawings like this that are messier, but maybe I should do that so you guys can see what's going on. Jaco says, going back to school tomorrow, have any tips on how to deal with difficult art teachers? It's tricky. I think you have to pick your battles. You have to figure out, is this really worth my time bothering them about something like Jordan always talks about how he had this teacher who really, really wanted them to work with charcoal. And you guys, Jordan hates charcoal. It's like he and I are totally opposite. I love charcoal. He hates it. But he said he went to the teacher and said, Hey, listen, can I draw with pencil instead? I really think I can do a great job. And the teacher said, okay, but I need to see really great work from you. From you, And Jordan was like, yep, I can do it. So Jordan worked his butt off and the teacher was like, great. So sometimes it does not hurt to ask. If there's something that you think, oh, well, maybe this would be better if I could do it like this, ask. And you know something, if they say no, then they say no, that's okay. But I think a lot of students don't realize that if you communicate with your teacher, things are different. <laughs> like so often, sometimes my daughter will say, oh, I really don't like this. I'd rather do it like this. And I'm like, why don't you ask? And she's like, I don't want to ask. I, I feel that that's an imposition and I don't want to do that. And I'm like, but it's no skin off your back to ask. The worst thing they can say is no. If they say yes, then that's terrific. So just do that. See if you can get the teacher 
let you do certain things. Other times you just got to buckle down and do it. I mean, that's okay too. And you know what, you guys, so much of the time, students will tell me, oh, well, the teacher made us do this, and I really don't like that, and I know that's that. And I'm like, how do you know? You don't know until you try, okay? So don't always make an assumption that you know better. <laughs> you might, but you might not. <laughs> also, I, I definitely have been in situations where I was like, oh, I know that I did not. I totally did not, you guys. So don't ever assume that that's the case. Yeah, there are some bad teachers out there. I'm not going to lie about that. But there's also circumstances where honestly students you guys have to just listen and give it a shot you have to give it a chance because i think i mean i did this too when i was in art school i had all kinds of assumptions i was like oh i don't need that or oh that's not going to work very well and i totally ate my words later <laughs> so it, it's a two-way street it's like yes teachers should be flexible and they should listen to their students but also students, you guys got to listen to. <laughs> so it goes both ways. All right, so what I'm doing right now is just another pass. It's the same thing that I was just doing, but I'm starting to let some of the forms interact. So does everybody see this group is going up and down. This group is going this way. So you have strokes going like this. So to me, this is showing the flatness of the pectoralis major. This pushes the form that way. And now this form, I'm going to connect it downwards to the rectus abdominis. And I'm really looking at the form. Like, do you guys see here how this form is very round? And so I'm gonna try to make strokes that show the roundness of that. Okay, and actually I should do some of the highlights at the top because I feel like I'm losing some of that. Mari says, I draw bodies, but I don't know that much about structure. Will you make a video about that? Well, I would really recommend, Mari, that you go check out our Anatomy for Artists series. There's a YouTube playlist. I think there's like 10 videos now. And we haven't gotten to everything, but most of it is there, at least the fundamental stuff that you can begin learning. And then we will cover all the smaller parts at some point but yeah if you guys want to get better at drawing the figure the anatomy is so helpful like to know that okay that's the pectoralis major serratus muscles are here this is the external oblique like you don't have to learn all the names but it really really helps to know what you're looking at especially on a figure like this it's not clear like it's not easy to see like if i didn't know that there was a center line here i i would be lost it would be very hard if i didn't know that the rectus abdominis is here and that the form goes downwards like this in the middle, I would be lost. Like th this form here, this is pretty dark. That's part of the rectus abdominis. And then here, let me connect this a little bit better. This is the external oblique, love handles, if you guys haven't heard that term before. Karen says, I've been trying to avoid cross-hatching up to now. I got my paper and pencils out, though. Cross-hatching is intimidating. I don't think it's that easy for a lot of people. And it's not very intuitive. Like, I definitely have a very particular technique that I use to do it that I have honed over time. Tom's giving us an update. It looks like a cross between the creature and Frankenstein in need of a lot of stitch removal. <laughs> oh my God, I just love that. I, I feel like that would be a great title for that artwork. <laughs> John Murph is asking, how are you so familiar with anatomical terms? I taught it so many times. I know this sounds ridiculous, but if you guys really want to learn something, teach it. Because <laughs> if you teach something, you have to learn it really well and inside out. When I was a student, yeah, I learned stuff. But the thing is, when you have to explain it to somebody, it's actually really difficult. And so having to do that many, many years over really helped me. And also, I studied a lot in graduate school, and I did so many life drawings. I mean, all of those things are really going to help. Blue Wolf is asking, how do you make the shapes with the cross hatching? I may be making two short marks or looking to make an X with the marks. Yeah, that's a really great question that you're asking, which is the length. 
of the marks. Okay, so look at this. If I do marks that are really long, like that, marks like this, I find they're hard to control because at a certain point, that's really hard. So for me, I guess it's like, what is that, like two inches? Maybe it depends on your hand, but for me, that's about the size where I can control it enough, but I'm not like drawing like that. Okay, I can still be fairly loose, but also get it across. Now, when you start doing short strokes like this, I tend to reserve the short strokes for the smaller details. So if I'm going in and I'm drawing fingernails or if I'm drawing little parts of the palm, if I'm doing stuff like that, then I will increasingly make the marks shorter. But for these larger, more general forms, I guess it's like that two inch approximation that I tend to do. But experiment, try out different strokes. And if you find, hey, you know, I do better with longer strokes and do it. It really, really depends on the person. That's for me about the right length that I can feel that I'm somewhat in control, but also I have the ability to be a little bit looser. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just looking at, okay, where do I want to build up the form? Because like here, where the pectoralis major is, like this is very dark. So I'm just going to try to build up some of those denser areas first just so they're more established. Like here, love handles, <laughs> right there. And then this form here on the rectus abdominis, this is one of the darker patches. So actually this whole area is pretty dark. So I'm just gonna fill it in because I know this is all in shadow. There's no point in leaving that to the blue of the page. <laughs> okay, but within that, I'm gonna build up the rectus abdominis and this form here is just popping out. So this one I'm really gonna do a lot. And then down here too, this is a lower section of the rectus abdominis. Okay, so you guys can see now this has been built up, this has been built up. I think up here I need a little more. Yeah, this section especially. And here too, does everybody see where the armpit is? Like it's very dark there. So I'm gonna just build that up a lot more so we can see it better. I mean, in some ways, you guys, drawing a figure like this is harder than drawing a thinner figure because the shapes are just not that visible. And so a thinner figure I think is easier just because the forms are more clear cut. And actually the whole face is in shadow. So I'm just gonna take a minute and just fill the whole thing in like this, but I'm not just coloring it in. I'm still keeping the structure here. Like this is the form underneath the mouth. There's a shadow underneath the chin that I want to be more visible like that. Okay, let's take a utility knife and sharpen this because it's getting a little bit dull. So if you guys have not seen this before, don't do this. This is what a lot of people do. Okay, that, that is not good, especially if somebody's standing next to you. Okay, <laughs> so take your thumb, put it behind the utility knife, and your thumb lets you push up so that way you don't break the pencil so easily. I mean, these break really easily. That's not you. But this makes it less likely <laughs> that you're going to break it. Let's try that. Okay. So now I really want to build up the shadow because again, it's lighting from above. So this whole center portion of the figure. And you know something, this is where you need to compare it because if you guys look at the highlight up here, that is so much brighter than here. So actually this whole area should have some degree of cross hatching, not a huge amount, but I don't want to leave it to that white, that white would be way too much. So now I'm starting to lose some of the form and you have to go back in, you have to beef up some of those areas and that will happen. You have to keep a hierarchy because otherwise if you don't, it, it just looks like a big mesh. 
which is not so fun. Okay. So here, I think that's a serratus muscle, I think. You can guess, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just building up some of this form on the side. How many of you anatomy nerds are finding this stuff? External oblique, serratus muscles, all that fun stuff. I mean, I think the only reason I memorize those names is so I can sound smart. <laughs> You know, if you're a professor, you want to sound smart, <laughs> whatever that's supposed to mean. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here I'm really going to build up because th this is pretty dark in value. And actually, I made that a little funky looking. I think that's a little bit too bulgy. I think this form would be a little bit better. Okay, and I do need to go in and do some of those highlights. So let me just build up some of the darkness over here, and then I'll have the opportunity to get in some of those highlights. I like cross-hatching a lot. I feel, feel that it's very meditative. I almost feel like it's like knitting, but for artists, it's really a nice, predictable feeling. Like the, the way I draw when I do gesture drawings is very frantic. And while I like that, and while I like the energy, it does stress me out a little bit in a way that this does not. Like this feels so step-by-step, step. it feels very procedural to me. So I do enjoy how straightforward this is for that reason. Right. Damini is asking, I used to sharpen like that. No, I don't do that anymore because I twist the pencil rather than the sharpener. It wouldn't break the lid. Should I continue or should I use the cutter? Whatever works for you, as long as you're being safe with the knife, I think that's totally fine. Let's see, Tom is asking, how do you know what directions your strokes have to go? That's a great question. A lot of it has to do with what the form is doing, okay? So do you guys see this here? This form is like a piece of skin. Do you guys see how it starts here in the armpit and it goes out like this? So if that's the direction of the form, I want to do strokes that push it in that direction. And, and really what you're doing is you're going across the form. So let me demonstrate this a little bit better, okay? So if I come here and let me see, if I'm doing, I don't know what that is, hot dog? <laughs> so if you form like this, most people know that a hot dog is round like this. So if I were to draw like lines, that shows you that, now it looks like a millipede. But anyway, you can see the roundness of that form. Okay, so when you cross hatch and you go over the form, let's say I'm cross hatching a hot dog, doing cross hatch strokes that follow the form, that's what I mean by that. So if you do it on the other side, it would be like that. Because if I have a hot dog and I cross hatch like this, like that doesn't look round at all. It just looks like marks. But by making these strokes that go like this, that go across the form, like basically in this direction, that's how you make it look round. So you have to look at where does the roundness go? So let me show you guys here. If I'm trying to show, for example, let me show you guys over here on this side. Okay, see here? This part of the arm, I know it's round like this, okay? So I'm gonna make strokes that go in that direction. And actually I can do it with the white so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, so here I can see there's some of the clavicle and you can see like the deltoid would be round like this. Okay, so for that reason, I'm gonna do strokes that go in that direction. So that shows like the roundness of that deltoid. Same thing up here with the trapezius. I mean, that's really specific. You guys don't have to draw it that way if that confuses you. 
But I happen to like that a lot because it really shows the form. So like up here, does everybody see these strokes? They show you the roundness of the deltoid because the deltoid is not flat, it's round. And so if I make strokes that go in this direction, you can see better how that goes. So I'm adding highlights here and same thing with the trapezius. The trapezius has like a roundness to it. So it's like you want the forms to really follow that direction. This is the part that's hard for people. It's the direction of the strokes. Again, you don't have to do that. I mean, there's a lot of people who do cross hatching and don't do this at all. You can do it however you want. I'm a big dork and I like anatomy stuff. So to me, anything that emphasizes the form and the anatomy to me is really fun and exciting. <laughs> so yeah, you don't have to do it that way. If it's too confusing, that's fine. Okay, so up here, I'm trying to really show some of the form and I might bring this down a little bit more like this. cross hatching takes time, guys. This is not a fast technique to learn. I feel like some of the other stuff that we've taught here before, like rugged tone and adding highlights and all that good stuff. That, that's a little bit more intuitive. This is harder. I think this takes more time, more practice to learn. It takes a lot of practice. I mean, I just did tons and tons of life drawings to figure this out. Marega saying, I'm really struggling to get neat marks. The pastel pencil and the texture of the paper diffuse the color, and I feel I'm more coloring than hatching, even though I make hatching movements. That's okay. I know it can feel messy. If it really bothers you, you could switch to a pencil or you could do colored pencil or you could actually, the, the most visible way to do cross hatching is a pen because then it's like really neat and then you can really see things well. But I like the pastel pencil because it's a little bit easier to blend. Like if you guys look in here, if I did this with pen, it would take twice as many marks to make it look smooth. So I like the pastel pencil because it gives me that flexibility to blend a little bit more. And I have not done this yet, but if you decide later on, oh, these are too harsh, you can take your kneaded eraser and sort of like blend the edges of it. And that's a nice option. Not everybody does that necessarily, but it's a good thing that you can try out. But yeah, if it bothers you, switch to a pen or switch to colored pencil, something that's a little bit less pigmenty would probably be the way to go. Dara says, I usually try and have at least three layers of cross hatching in different directions. I mean, for me, if I want it really rendered, it's like 10 layers. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. That's why this technique is not fast. So now Angelica is saying longer and looser for lighter shadow and smaller, tighter for darker. For me, it's more about the form. But yeah, I mean, if you want something lighter, don't press down as hard. That's another thing. I haven't talked about that yet is pressure. Okay. So let me show you guys with the pencil here. Okay. If I want to do, let's say, a smoother transition from this shadow to here. Okay, watch, watch this. I'll just develop this a little bit more. Here, I pressed down harder because I wanted that value range. I wanted that to be nice and dark. Like here as well, I'm pressing down a lot harder. But the thing about cross hatching that I don't think people talk a lot about is pressure. That's another thing is if you have a pen, you can't change the pressure because the pen is the pen. Okay, here I can change the pressure because it's more pastel -y, so I can actually do that. So now in here, I can go very, very light. I mean, I'm barely touching the paper. I'm, I'm almost not touching the paper. Actually, let me beef this up. So I can go in here and I can make the marks really light like this. And then if I don't like them, I can always erase them down. So that's kind of a nice option. And like here too, if I want to do a slower transition, I'm going to press hard where I want it dark like this. So I really build it up. And some people do like 
drawing to the point that you lose the line. I mean, that's what a lot of the Michelangelo drawings are, that the cross-hatching so refined that you don't see the cross-hatching anymore. That's another approach. Some people like it, other people don't. I tend to like to see the lines more. That's my personal taste. But however you guys want to do it. So yeah, like here, I'm barely touching it. And I'm trying to build up more in the middle. So the lines are not as visible as what I was doing before. Dina says, I'm applying to study abroad. I only get to apply to the UK where independent work is the main approach. Should I wait till next year? I mean, that's really hard for me to answer because I don't know your personal situation and what would happen if you decided or not. I mean, I think you have to look at what's the best fit. Like, is RISD actually the best fit for you? And do your research on school because a lot of students, they say, oh, well, RISD is ranked number one. I should go there. But the thing is, you have to look at the department because depending on the department, you have a really different experience. Like I tell a lot of animation students, like, listen, if you guys want to work in the industry, like the animation, Pixar, Disney industry, don't go to RISD. That's not a good fit. Go to Cal Arts or something like that, which is a lot more pivoted in that direction. Like if you want to be more like an artsy, independent filmmaker, RISD is a great fit. RISD will definitely teach you that. But look at the majors, Dina. I think that makes a big difference. I want to give a shout out to Hutchin. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. Any amount that you guys can contribute to Art Prof matters because we want to make sure that Art Prof stays 100% free. And for that to happen, we need your support. So you guys can get information in the video description below for how you guys can help us out. Blue Wolf says, oh, this looks so horrible. I had an easier time with Rug of Tone. Rug of Tone is way more forgiving. A lot easier, a lot faster. It makes more sense. Cross-hatching is hard, you guys. So if you're struggling, th this is <laughs> the way it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be easy. Hutchin says, thanks for the mushroom tutorial. Learned a lot from you for my pumpkin, which was posted on Instagram. Hope you saw it. I haven't checked lately, I'll see. I mean, the thing is we're getting so many tags now that sometimes it's hard for me to keep track of everything, but I'll do the best I can to see if I can find that. Madeka says, yes, I'm struggling. You should be, <laughs> unless you guys have tons and tons of experience, this should not be easy. In fact, if it's hard for you, it probably means that you are really trying. You're really trying to do it the way that I'm teaching it, because the way I teach it is not easy. It's not at all. Kay Eep says, great to find you online. Just started drawing, although I'm struggling, learning so much. That's fine. You should be struggling. Drawing is not easy. It is not the way people make it look on Instagram. It is hard work. And that's not as glamorous, but you know what? That's the real way to learn this stuff. And Anna says, I more and more love cross-hatching. It's so relaxing. It looks like the drawings in old biology books. Oh, I know. Don't you love those? Those Vesalius drawings of old anatomy that are so wonky and don't make any sense, but they're beautiful. I mean, I love cross-hatching for that reason. Hutchins asking, will you have a stream just for deep discussion for color temperature? Yep, definitely. We are trying to cover all the basics of lighting and composition and color. But wow, there's so much to cover. <laughs> like we haven't even gone over artificial light, natural light. We have a lot to go over. <laughs> so we will get there. <laughs> okay. I would like to know from you guys, do you want me to finish this piece for the rest of the stream or should we tackle Christian Bale? <laughs> Let me know. It's not hot Christian Bale. It's scary, skinny Christian Bale. <laughs> Let me know which one you guys would rather I do because I know sometimes it is very helpful to see a piece really finished, on the other hand, it is sort of nice to see, okay, well, what are the differences depending on body type? Because the body type does change things a lot. So just tell me in the chat, who, who wants Jack Black to get resolved and who wants Christian Bale? Look in the video 
description for the reference photo links if you guys want to see. But it's an image of him. He's really, really thin. And the muscles and bones are like popping out like crazy. So let me know. Or if you guys think Jack Black needs the art prof treatment. I mean, I suppose he's already gotten it. But the full out art prof treatment for Jack Black. Because I have to say, I don't know that I see a lot of streams of people drawing larger figures on YouTube. I mean, maybe I'm not looking in the right place, but it's not that common. I mean, everybody wants to draw Wolverine. I mean, I don't. I just think that's distracting. But, <laughs> but most people do not look like Wolverine. Most people have a lot. I mean, he has no fat on his body. Most people have fat on their body. So <laughs> most people do not eat steamed chicken for a year <laughs> and nothing else. I think I read somewhere that was all he ate. Or maybe it was Michael B. Jordan. I don't know. But it's like you read about these diets. And I'm like, is it really worth it? <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you're being paid millions of dollars to star in a movie, maybe it is worth it. <laughs> I just like eating way too much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Boris, for the super chat. We greatly appreciate your support, you guys. This is so helpful. We want to keep our content free for everybody. And for that to happen, we need your help. Any contribution you guys can make. Damini says, I'm just an average artist trying to earn money to buy myself some stuff. What is the best way to do that as an artist? That's a big question. I would recommend that you look at our YouTube playlist on business and selling for artists. I will tell you, if you just want casual cash, it's not the greatest way. It's hard. It's really hard to make money. It's a lot of it is marketing and social media. I mean, you have to ask yourself if that time is really worth it. I mean, there are other things that are a lot, um, a lot easier <laughs> to make money, actually. Mohammed says, I'd love master copy demos in different mediums like gouache and oil. Okay, we can look into that. Deep D and Jordan just did one the other day that was a master copy in Procreate. So you might want to check that out because even though it's in Procreate, they do talk a lot about how to approach a master copy and what are some of the things you guys want to get into. Okay, so it looks like a lot of people, well, Blue Wolf wants me to do bail. But it seems like a lot of people want to do Jack Black. And Dude says, Finnis Jack, I would like more experience, less defined bodies. David wants to start a new one. Want to see how you do hatching? Because I'm like, well, that's your deal. <laughs> uh, let's see. KF says, you guys have videos on what materials you need for pencil drawings. We do. If you look up in the YouTube playlist, there's one called pencil drawings and you guys can just look that up. Usually what you'll find is I put the supplies, the links in the description. So anytime you guys go into the YouTube video description, you'll find that. Melissa says, love the gouache videos more please. Well, we are very lucky because we were able to get enough funds from our raffle that we do have the funds now to purchase the equipment we need to send to our teaching artists. So that is coming soon. It's going to take some time because we have to get the equipment. We have to train everybody. So it's not going to happen immediately, but I'm hoping in the next month we'll be able to get that done. Okay, let's finish Jack Black because it seems like people want me to keep going with that. And then I can also show you guys, because um, I probably am going to build in like some other colors in here just to make it more interesting. We'll do Christian some other time. Maybe Christian needs his own stream. Although he's so scary looking in that picture. I mean, the crazy things he has done to his body is, is really frightening when you look. I mean, that's got to catch up with you at some point. It's so scary. Okay, I'm going to go through and I just want to solidify the dark areas. And actually, let me check my autofocus for a second because I just want to make sure that... That's working. Okay, good. Because sometimes it changes the more that I work on the drawing. Okay. Let's do some squinting. I have not done a lot of that. I want to fix this. I think the hatching is a little more flat on the side. And let's really pump up the value. Like, this is very dark. 
We just really want to get that form to pop. Yeah, we can do another stream of Christian. Because I did do, actually, where did I put it? This was a warm up that I did of the Christian Bale photo. I did this before the stream because <laughs> Jordan and I, always, we always like warm up a little bit before the stream because we feel like it's weird to just go in cold. And so I just did this as a quick warm up before the other one, but I wasn't warmed up. Of course, that was the whole point of this. So maybe I'll do another stream on that. We'll see. I just think that's an amazing photo. I mean, it's scary looking, but it's, it's a really startling image in terms of really starting to see the anatomy. Okay, I think I'm losing the contour on this side a little bit. Oh, you know what it is? I think I subdivided this. That's not good. Yeah, th this is, ugh, this form is not good. So I don't erase a lot when I do cross hatching because I feel like it can really mess you up. But in this case, I, I lost the form. So I just needed to fix that. And maybe I'll pull this in. So yeah, I mean, like, don't go in and like erase big batches. I think that's not a good idea. But if you're really trying to like fix something, that's probably a good thing to do. Okay. All right, so that that brings out, I think it's still not enough. I think it still needs to come, maybe it needs to come out. So yeah, like even at this stage, you'll get these like larger fixes that you need to do. Oh, that looks bad. Maybe I need to lift a little bit of that form out. Yeah, th this is really just a, a drawing issue that I had. I think I sort of lost some of that form. And again, I'm not going for accuracy. I just wanna show form. I wanna make this feel dimensional and convincing in that way. But yeah, if you guys are finding the pastel pencil is too messy for you, switch to charcoal pencil or just regular pencils good. Colored pencils are also great. They're neater. I just like this because it, it blends faster. Like you can see down here, it really is starting to blend. Like if I did this with pen, it would take forever and ever. If you guys want to do cross hatching with pen, look at Song Kang's tutorials that we have. They're under the pen and ink YouTube tutorials playlist. I mean, her cross touching is so good that it's very intimidating. But we like having masters here at our prof as well. All right, I'm building up this. See, it might feel like I'm ignoring some of those transitions, but it's like I need this form. The darks have to be really solid because if I start working on transitions, and the darks are not solid, I'm gonna be in big trouble. So what I'm doing is like overdoing the darks and then later on I'll come in with some other sections. Yeah, like here there's almost like an indentation. Do you guys see that? Actually, I think that's too much. I think I built up too much here. So let's just pull that down a little bit like that. Yeah, I think I overdid it there. So I'll tackle the transitions in a little bit, but right now I still, still feel like it's a little bit too light. Now, does everybody see also, I'm working the whole thing. I'm trying really, really hard to not stay in one spot. So let's build up a little bit more, and then I'll show you guys how to work on that, this transition so that way the shadows don't feel so harsh because they, they are very harsh right now. I want to get more of that soft look. By the way, in terms of pressure, I'm not pressing hard right now. The more you work on a crosshatch drawing, the less hard you want to press because the less hard you press, the lighter and thinner the lines are and the more likely they are to blend better. Like if I start pressing really hard, I'm gonna lose all that. Actually, I think this is a little bit harsh, so I'm just gonna pull back some of this. Like some of the erasing I'm doing right now, you could not do this with a pen. And you, you could do it with a pencil. Color pencil, probably not so much. Color pencil is pretty difficult to erase. I mean, maybe if you have one of those like sand erasers. 
So actually what you're seeing here is I'm lifting some of these spots that I think I overdid it on. So, and then I'm gonna go in and work on this transition a little bit more. Like that. Yeah, this is too harsh too. So I guess I'm just cleaning up parts of the drawing that I think I overdid it. Like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna like really go all the way with this piece, but I will say that I don't tend to like drawings that are super tightly rendered. That's my personal taste. I mean, some people do, but just ask yourself what you like. Do you like something that's more finished or do you want something that's maybe a little bit coarser looking? It's all a matter of personal taste, it's nothing else. One is definitely not better than the other. My feeling is you guys should just look at these streams and just say like, okay, which technique works for you better? I mean, maybe rug of tone is better. <laughs> All right. Iwara says, what did you mean by rug of tone? So rug of tone is something that I talk about when I draw with charcoal which is just to draw big chunks of flat areas of charcoal. Because a lot of people, they tend to pick too soon with charcoal drawings. And so I talk about the rug of tone as sort of like rolling out a rug that's big tone of gray to get yourself started. San K, thank you so much for the super chat. We greatly appreciate your support. San says, these videos motivate me. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you so much for your contribution. And Blue Wolf is asking for homework. <laughs> I love you guys. My students at RISD never did that. Can you give us some cross-hatching homework so we can practice after the stream? This is really hard to learn. I think some apples and mushrooms for practice would help. Yeah, I mean, you can pick something that's a little bit more simple. Although what gets tricky is sometimes people know how to draw spheres, but they don't know how to transition to a body. So you could try that. But I also think maybe just a bunch of figure drawings, like some torsos, would probably be a good place to start. Like, don't do the whole figure. I think the whole figure is really challenging. But just a bunch of torsos is really great. Lisa says, any hints on using random marks for hairy areas? Well, I guess we should do that. <laughs> Let me build up a little bit more. I don't think I'm quite ready to do that yet, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna switch colors and I'm gonna show the direction of the strokes, but I need this to be smoother to do that. Otherwise the lines are going to fight with each other. R. Numinous says, you inspired me to be more free with my drawings. I'm so happy you exist. Well, that's so great. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, a lot of people, myself included, have a lot of trouble loosening up with drawing. And the thing is, it's like, it doesn't sound hard, but it is. <laughs> it's one of those things where you're like, that's not hard. Yeah, it is. Some things sound so simple when you say it out loud. And then when you sit down to do it, you're like, oh, that's hard. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to soften some of the transitions. I wonder if I should add another color. I'm trying to, this is sort of like a reddish color. Let me see what happens. Oh, I kind of like that. Let, let's use some of this red color. Now, if you guys do decide that you want to add a color, make sure you put the color all over the place. Oh, actually, you know what I should do? Maybe I should put some dark blue. Let, let's just see. I, I don't know. Maybe this is a bad idea. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't like the way that looks. Maybe this is sort of like a dark gray. Well, that's kind of nice because it's got a little bit of a bluish tint. Okay, let's just do a little bit of this. The key to some of this is you need to put the color everywhere. Like, don't just put the color in one spot. If you put it everywhere, it's going to sink in a little bit more. Actually, what I should do, maybe I should do like a gray. Maybe that will sink in more into the blue. Let me see. This might be too light, though. Yeah, this is too light. Oh, maybe this one. Maybe this one's the, oh, this one's not sharpened. Let me just take a minute, sharpen that. that that's another reason I like the pastel pencils, especially if you're using a colored paper. 
this gray, because it's a little bit bluish, it's going to sink into the blue. It's not going to be as obvious. And so it's going to be easier for me to do some of those transitions. Let's see. Oh, crap. It always does this. This is why these are so annoying. They, they break. These break more than the charcoal pencils. They're not as hard. So I find them to be a pain in the butt for that reason. Okay. Okay, let's try that. Let me see if that's a better transition into this stuff. Mm, it's okay. It's a little bit. No, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, like I have a very sharp tip here. So this is helping me right now. So if you don't have a sharp tip, you might want to take a knife and go in and fix that. So now I'm working on transitions. Okay, so how do I get from this into this? without being so harsh because I don't like this mark here. Okay, so here, it's a slow build like that. So you can see this gray is not as visible as the brown. It's easier for me to do some of those transitions and I'm pressing really light guys, so, so light. I mean, like I said before, I'm barely touching the paper. This is the stage where you have to be very sensitive with your touch. You have to be very refined with how you use it. Because the changes I'm doing right now, they're more subtle. They're not as obvious as what I was doing earlier, but they're important still. Actually, I think I might need like a black. Let, let me just do a little bit more with the gray, maybe here in the center. And then I'm gonna switch to black because I feel like I need more value, like the brown is just not doing it right now. So do you guys see how this gray, it's a nice transition, showing the strokes, but it's not like getting into everything just yet. I know the, the body hair is gonna be really interesting. I don't quite know how I'm gonna do that, but we'll try, we'll see what happens. And then, I should do more with the white. I don't want to do a huge amount because this white's very bright and there's not that much of it. I don't know. Maybe I'll do less of that. Let me just keep going with the gray. Like, I don't mind the white being so pronounced. Certainly you guys could like really, really make it brighter if you want. I'm not gonna do too much of the face, but I do wanna show like the darkness, like especially in the cheeks. Let's just really build that up. So at the very least it's not a distraction. Because to me, the head is less about articulating the forms and more about just showing, okay, this is all in shadow. Like that's all I care about with the head. So it might get a little messy in here, but that's okay because the more important thing is like feeling the chin, like going into the chest. That's what I'm more concerned by. So here I'm, I'm gonna push out, like th this is his clavicle, like it's really soft looking. That's another thing, if you have a figure that is larger, the forms are gonna feel softer. They're not gonna be as tight. They're not gonna have that like tension that Wolverine has. Oh God, I feel like watching X-Men now. Actually, you know what I watched last night? I watched Studio Ghibli's um, Spirited Away, which is like my absolute favorite Miyazaki film. I mean, I like the other ones too. Don't get me wrong. I really like Princess Mononoke. and But I think out of all the Miyazaki films, that's definitely my favorite. I just think the character design is so good. I think it's really, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it too much, but I feel like there's a lot of metaphors in that film that I really like. Oh man, that trapezius is terrible. Shoot, I have to lift that up. Got a little bit more dramatic. But I was watching that film and I've seen it so many times. <laughs> like, it, it's one of those movies that I barely have to like pay attention when I watch it because I know what's going on. But I know here we talk a lot about backgrounds and compositions and a lot of you guys are always telling me, well, if I add a background, that's gonna ruin my piece. Guys, if you watch a Ghibli film, the backgrounds are beautiful. 
they're so oh my god like i was really watching for the backgrounds last night and i was just blown away by those backgrounds so anybody who tells me you don't need a background you're missing out <laughs> you're missing on the opportunity to do those studio ghibli backgrounds that just oh my god blow you away let me build up like he's got these creases on the side that I think are pretty important. So I want to build that up. I mean, this is so dense. I'm not really even hatching anymore because it's, it's really, really dark. I mean, that's sort of the whole point of that. Okay. Let's go in. Now I want to do a little, little tiny bit more with the gray because I still feel like the center part of the body. And by the way, another thing that's hard, you guys do have to train yourself to draw without your hand resting on the paper. Like if you guys look at this, I'm not doing this. My hand is above. And it took me a while to learn how to do that. that that's again, another skill that's not easy to translate. Let's do a little bit more white on the edge because I have not had an opportunity to really do that. And I am gonna erase some of this because I want more of the space going on over here. Look at that. Like my whole theory on Spirited Away, one of my favorite characters is No Face. I think he's very odd and mysterious and I just love him for that reason. Hang on one second. I think I lost, my mouse keeps turning on and off. Sorry for that noise. Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down so you guys don't have to listen to that. Okay. But yeah, my theory on No Face is that he absorbs everything around him. And so he went crazy in the bathhouse because the bathhouse was full of very greedy people who were obsessed with you know getting the gold and all that stuff. But then when he was around San, he calmed down. And he was so cute when he went to Zeniba's house. I just love that so much. So yeah, for me, he was such an interesting character. So strange, so gentle, but monstrous at the same time. I, I just really liked that about that character. Okay, I'm just lifting a little bit here because I don't really want to put the white over the brown, I feel like that would look strange. So I'm trying to keep the white here, but not interacting too much. Okay, let's do some, let's add a little bit of black because I think we need some of this. Brett is asking, why is it bad to put your hand on the paper besides smudging the graphite? I mean, that's it, you can, especially with pastel pencil, it's so, soft that if I put my hand on it, I'd just smudge away the whole drawing. And so that would be the issue. Oh my God, San Kay, that is my favorite shot. In the whole movie when he eats the cheesecake, I don't know. There's something about the way he puts it into his mouth that is just like, oh my God, so good. Mario is saying, what about the hairy chest? I mean, how can it make the difference if there's shadow? I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So I need to get this smoother before I can do that, because otherwise the hair is not going to work out very well. Okay, let's build up. Uh, actually, I, I do need to do more in here. Okay, hang on a sec. Sorry, I keep saying I'm ready, but then I like see another spot that I wanna work on. Because really, if I want that chest hair to work, I need the cross hatching to be smoother. If the cross hatching is not smooth enough, it's not gonna work. Actually, what I might do, I might just save the chest hair for black. I mean, that's another advantage when you have the different colors is you really can separate certain parts of the image with color. If you're doing pen, that is not an option that you have. I want to build up his serratus muscles a little bit more. I feel like in here, I lost them a little bit. And you can see a little bit of rib cage here. It's minor. You don't see that much of it but it's definitely in there. See, like in here, I feel like I can see too many of my strokes. Oh, here's another thing, guys, that I wanna tell you. 
When you're doing hatching and it's so dense, sometimes people just do this because they say, oh, it doesn't matter. It does actually. So you'll notice that even though the drawing is very dense, I'm still doing individual strokes. I'm not doing this, okay? That's a big difference because I think that that changes your mindset and that you start coloring and that's not the same thing as hatching. When you hatch, you're hatching in a specific direction to achieve a very particular goal. So that's why I'm gonna recommend not doing that. Because when I can do it like this, it's actually a lot easier. Okay. So that transition is starting to feel better. But it's like I keep finding <laughs> spots that to me are not smooth enough, that don't have the transition that I'm looking for, like that. I mean, I'm not gonna work that much on the arms. I feel like it's more about the torso. But I think at the very least, as long as you guys can see the overview, that's probably what we need. Okay, that's getting there. I still feel like this transition's not great. I mean, if I were doing charcoal, I guess this is me like smudging things, making things a little bit smoother in terms of transitions. Okay, let's do, let's do this. This is almost black, but let's do this for some of the dark sections of the figure and then we'll do some chest hair, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't think this is the typical YouTube stream. I, I don't think a lot of YouTube streams do larger figures with chest hair. I don't think that's as common. Most people are drawing Wolverine. And I get that it does make it easier for students, but at some point you have to draw a regular person. You can't just draw these massively pumped people. I mean, who has time for this stuff? I mean, you must have to spend like four hours at the gym to look like that. I can't imagine it's anything less than that. I mean, who has time for that? Unless you're like a celebrity or really, really rich. Okay, so this is giving me a little bit more value, not a huge amount, but enough to distinguish some of these portions. Like I really want this rectus abdominis to come forward. This form got a little bit too light, so I'm going to bring this form back. And then down here, too, rectus abdominis as well. And then the belly button in there. Okay, so you can already see that's starting to pop a little bit more. I mean, I could keep going <laughs> forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Rigglesworth says, dad bods are underrated. And Lisa says, my Jack is the Incredible Hulk drops his gym membership. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. I mean, I feel like the last few Incredible Hulk movies, the Hulk wasn't even a person. I think they animated him. So they were able to do wacky things with his anatomy that were just funny. I don't know. You sort of have to admire those old movies where they like painted a guy green and I don't know. I, I sort of love that stuff. <laughs> All right. I think the chin definitely. That's an area of pressure. I want to really build up that value. And let's put in the rhymes with stipple because those got a little bit lost. Yeah, a lot of figure drawing videos I've seen, it's like they idealize everything. I'm like, that's not real people. Not everybody looks like they came from Pinterest. Most people do not come from Pinterest. So I, I don't understand the logic. Because actually, um, I had a roommate in art school and she was really into fashion magazines. Like she would read Bazaar and Vogue and she's really, really into them. And she'd always talk to me about like, oh my God, it takes so much to be so beautiful. I'm like, no, it doesn't. You just have to win the lottery, like when you're born basically. And 
she used to always use the male models in those magazines as reference photos for her drawings. And I'm sorry, but her drawings looked weird because I'm like, most waiters don't look like that. Like, uh, most servants do not look like they're off the cover of GQ magazine. And it made her illustrations look weird because it, it, it wasn't real people. Because the illustrations she was doing were, were trying to be like editorial illustrations of like real people, but she's not really showing that very well. Okay, so everybody see this section is where you do start to see some of the subdivision of the muscles. And I'm just gonna soften it because I do think, I think I made it a little bit too pronounced. And I think, oh yeah, this needs to be darker too. But that's the one spot on the figure where there is quite a bit of enunciation of the form. Actually over here too, I don't think I did enough here. I think there's sort of like an indentation here. Yeah, that needs to look better. And then, the abdominus, rectus abdominus, comes in here. That's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so that gives the figure more form. Anna says, well, we are in the art studio. They are at the gym. We practice to draw muscles, and they actually create big muscles to draw for us. <laughs> that sounds like some life cycle <laughs> of artists and models. I just I love that so much. Okay, hang on. Let's get that. All right. I want to do a little bit more on the face because while the face is not that important, it does look weird to have nothing there. Even if you guys just hint at something, it, it still helps because what the face does is it helps contextualize everything else. So that's why I say like, if you're drawing a seated figure, don't draw the figure and not draw the stool. Like that's strange. Just add it in, it doesn't have to be amazing, but you wanna do something. Okay, everybody ready to draw some body hair? <laughs> here we go. We're gonna do it in black. And let me just zoom in. If you guys have the photo, that I gave you guys in the bottom description below, I would definitely zoom in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the darkest hairs first. And the key here is you don't wanna just draw the hair just on top, you have to really like blend it in. So these marks I'm making, they're very different. They're not cross touch marks. It's me sort of getting across the surface. And so this is again, where it like really helps me that I have the pastel pencils because I can really like blend this in. I mean, I don't know that this is gonna look that great, but <laughs> I'll do the best I can. <laughs> Body hair is not easy to draw. Uh, and actually on, it's a little bit uneven. Like, do you guys, oh, I mean, all body hair is uneven, but just, like, it, there's a, sort of like a little bald spot here in the middle. And now I'm gonna press real hard. So you guys can really see that better. And up here, oh dear, I don't know that this is gonna look any good, guys. <laughs> it might look terrible, but I tried. I tried to teach you guys how to draw body hair. It's not an area I have a lot of experience in. But... I mean, we have a stream on how to draw hair, but it does not include body hair. So that's what's really tricky about this. You know, I might switch. This black has like a hard spot in it. I don't know. I might have to switch to charcoal pencil to get this. Let me see. This black is not very good. So I think if I use charcoal pencil, I might be better off. Let me see. Okay, let's try this. Maybe this will help. No, I need the soft one. This is medium. Let's, try. let's see. Soft, okay, that's what I need. 
I don't know. Maybe it's not going to look that great. Oh, it doesn't mix well. Okay, we'll, we'll just stick with this then. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually shave some of the top off because I can feel there's like a hard spot in these, this pencil. Sometimes you'll get that with these pencils. There's like a little hard spot in the middle and you have to just scrape it away. Okay, let's try that. I'm going to have to like really build this up. Okay, now down here in the middle... Actually, the body here in the middle stomach is more visible. It's easier to see. So this might be not as difficult. Although, I don't know, maybe it'll be harder. <laughs> Although, this is a very good point. Sorry, my mouse is acting funny. Slutnir says body hair is tough because it has to be suggested. Exactly. Like, you can't draw it so it's super, super visible. That is really, really tricky. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, I think Slepnir, that's a great point. It's like you want the body hair to look attached to the figure. And if it looks like it's sitting on the surface, that's when you get in trouble. And you can see here, the hair is going in a very particular direction. Like here, it's going up. Here it moves off to the side. So here, very important to look at the direction of the body here. Because I think a lot of people, they go on automatic pilot when it comes to hair. It's easy to just say, oh, blah, 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 blah. let's just fill it in. It's not like that though. Hair is more complex than that. And I think if you go on automatic pilot, you end up with stuff that it, it just doesn't look natural. It looks too artificial. So Slepnir, I'm going to use your suggestion, which is to make the body hair more suggested. So what I might do is after I put in these strokes is go back in with the brown and maybe just smudge it in a little bit more. Maybe that will help. Yeah, because I can already see some of these blacks I'm putting in, they're, they're too dark. So I need to tone them down. But first I got to put them in and then I'll go in and I'll tone them down. It's a back and forth. You're not going to get it all in one run. And I also, I make sure he doesn't have like tiger stripes. Like that just looks really strange. <laughs> okay. And also it couple, it, it covers the rhymes with stipple. Yeah, I don't have an, you know what it is? I think up here, it's like it sticks out too much. I think I have to like really blend it in. I don't know, I'm surprised. I didn't think I was gonna have to blend this much, but I actually do. Like I'm not cross hatching anymore. I, I'm just doing marks just to get the body hair to like sink. It feels a little bit better. Oh my God, guys, he looks like he's made out of wood. Looks terrible. <laughs> Shikes. Okay, I need to smooth this out. You know what I might do? I might actually lift some with the eraser. Let's just do a passive brown. So we tone down some of that black. Because the black was overkill. But I mean, you have to start somewhere. You can't just get it right. Yeah, I'm going to lift. I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to lift out some of these passages. So this is where I'm like playing more. Like this is no longer 100% cross hatched image, but that's okay. Who says it has to? So now we have some spots that have a little bit more softened areas. So again, like that, that's what you can do with the pastel pencil that you can't do with other media. Yeah, and in here I'm gonna lift. I don't know, and I kind of like that variety in the image. It's kind of fun. Yep, in here, let's lift that out. It's 
better. It's still not great. I might have to like actually smudge with my finger, which I don't like to do. I don't like to smudge with my finger much, but it does help a little bit. It's weird. My screen has a lot more contrast than my actual drawing does. So I'll, I'll post it for you guys in the Discord. I think you'll see it's not as severe as it looks. I think the contrast in my webcam is a little bit strong. So what I'm doing here, I'm just smudging some of that out, softening some of these sections like that. Oh my God, does he look just so funky and weird? God, body hair is hard. Oh, sheesh. I'm just going to keep lifting with this eraser because I need it. It's way too harsh in some of these spots. The problem is like once you start lifting, you kind of can't stop. Like you can't just lift in one spot. You have to lift everywhere. That, that's the key to a lot of things. Like you add a new color, you add a new mark, you have to put it everywhere. Like same thing up here, I'm gonna pull out some of these spots. How are you guys doing? How's that, how's that body hair going for you guys? And actually here, I'm going to pull out more of the muscle. Oh, God, this might be turning into one of those, sheesh, I should have stopped a long time ago. But it's an experiment. It's fine. It's a way for me to draw stuff that I don't normally draw. Mario says, what I like the most of drawing is adapting changes as I go. Oh yeah, it's totally unpredictable. I mean, I think that that's great. If, if I knew what my drawing was gonna look like every single time, I would not be here. That would be so incredibly boring to me. I would not like that. So like a lot of people will say things to me like, oh, well, I'm very frustrated with this drawing because it doesn't look exactly how I imagined it in my head. And I think that's limiting because I think then you're not as accepting of some of the inevitable changes that happen, but also that it's very narrow-minded. It's a way to not let yourself be surprised. And I love that. I love being surprised by my drawings. So I think not having those expectations is really, really helpful. Actually, there's a muscle there that's coming in. Okay, so I'm really like destroying the cross hatching in a way, but I like the cross hatching because it's it's like a very structured way to think about things. I need to do a little bit more the kneaded eraser. Um, maybe up here. Maybe I'll just smudge with my finger a little bit. I don't do that much, but now it seems like it might be appropriate. Hmm. I think I got to zoom out. I'm starting to get a little picky with the image and I'm losing track of some of the form. So I just zoomed my image all the way out. So I'm not looking for details. I was getting a little sucked in. Now I'm starting to look at the bigger forms, looking at those transitions like that. So, I mean, you guys can totally just leave yours crosshatch. You don't have to do what I did, but this was a fun experiment. I think just to see where I could go with this. And I do want to do a little bit more belly button. Let's make that a little bit more prominent. Soften up that edge. Like to me, a lot of cross hatching, it's like a mindset. It's not just the hatch marks. It's like getting yourself to really think about structure is extremely helpful. Sophia says, since I'm only using one color, I was nervous about adding the body hair, but it's actually working out pretty well for me, especially since I've never really drawn much body hair. That's awesome. It's great. It's like, just try it. It's, it's not a big deal. If you don't like it, don't do it again. <laughs> like, it's totally fine. Lisa says, the body hair went out of control for me. You know what? Rain it back, Lisa. 
you guys saw I overdid it. And then I went back with the kneaded eraser and just pulled it back. I think it's better to overdo it and then pull yourself back. That's totally fine. Jennifer says, I think your frustration with the hair is that you drew it as quote hair and not the cross hatch. You changed the technique and threw you off. Yeah, but I think that's okay. <laughs> I think that the body hair is like a whole other beast. And so I don't know that it makes sense to cross hatch it because it is line work, but it's not the same thing. It's not like a form. It's, it's a, something that's on the surface. So I don't think for me that it makes sense to do it that way, but I don't know, maybe you guys could try it so you're more consistent about it, but just give it a shot. Just see what happens. That is totally fine. I'd love for you guys to join me in the Art Prof Discord. I will be hanging out in the Art Alongs channel. If you are not in the Discord, the invite link is in the YouTube video description below. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And I want to give a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. You guys make it possible for us to have the resources that we need to keep Art Prof up and running. And I'm so proud we have the second slide. Every time I see it, it never gets old. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.